Hello, gorgeous. Welcome to HG Radio, everything beauty, cancer, and inspiration. Here is your co-founder and host, Kim Becker. Hello, gorgeous, and thank you for joining us today. I'm your host, Kim Becker, and this is Hello, Gorgeous, everything beauty, cancer, and inspiration on Society Bites Radio, social interaction for your mind and soul. I am so excited that I get to be your host today and share with you what's happening and hopefully give you a few things, a few ideas that will help make this next decade of 2020 and beyond better than what your last 10 years were. So I, it's funny, as we wrapped up 2019, I got to thinking that it was more than just wrapping up a year, that it wrapped up like a whole entire decade. And when you sit back and you think and reflect about what happened in the last 10 years, it was life-changing how many things that, you know, happened professionally and personally for me. Um, we started an affiliate program that is now 10 years old. We've certified more than 100 salons in 15 states from the inception of the affiliate program through Hello Gorgeous. I quit a career that I had done for more than 30 years to work full-time on my passion. And that's difficult to step out from behind the chair, a guaranteed income that you knew that you had, the, a career that you were confident in. And I gave it all up to follow this amazing journey that God's left me on. Left, he's led me on um, with Hello Gorgeous. We moved the offices from our dining room into a beautiful 12,000 square foot office space. Um, we've actually performed one of the quickest makeovers that we ever did. And we did a reveal in front of the largest crowd of 10,000 people in the last decade. My son is this wonderful young man who started high school. And unfortunately, I became a widow. So there were lots of highs and lows in the last 10 years. But what I want to be able to do today is I want to ask you to reflect on what were your last 10 years like? What changes happened in your life over the last 10 years? Was it a wedding, a divorce? Did you make a career change or a location change? Did you have babies come in and out of your life? Did you become an empty nester? Or maybe you started a new business. It, time goes so fast. They used to say all the time, I remember hearing that when the older that you get, the faster time goes. And I didn't always believe that. I, when they would say that, I'm like, oh, time's always going to go this way. And it doesn't. You talk about going fast, wait till your child enters high school. And all of a sudden, those four years, just they, they just evaporate. They go so fast. And so I, what I want to talk about today in this podcast is just to give you some tools that, that we do, that we work on with our team to help make 2020 and beyond some of your best years that you've lived. I want you to look back on these next 10 years and say, man, those were the best years of my life and that they're only going to get better, right? Just to set this solid foundation up so that you're setting yourself up for success. And I think that that's what I'm finding more and more as time goes on that, and I've really tried to teach this to my son, that life is truly 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. You know, I, I sit so many times and I think, as a single parent now, I, I never wanted to be here. You know, when I got married, I married, I took the vows for better, or for worse. I took the vows in sickness and in health. And I wanted to be, I loved being married. I loved having my person right next to me all the time and having my biggest cheerleader with me all the time. Being a widow was never anything that I ever thought that I would have to go through, but being single again wasn't anything that I ever anticipated. So I've got two choices. I can mull around and play poor me and, and ask people to feel sorry for me because I'm a widow now, or I can pull up my bootstraps and I can say, okay, what am I supposed to learn from this? If I'm supposed to be a widow, how can I be the best widow that I can be? Because dragging around and, and playing poor me, that's not good for anybody. It's not good for me. It's not a good example for my son. It's not a good example for other widows that will come after me. You know, some of the things that I had to tell myself going forward was, I'm not the first person to be a widow, and I'm not going to be the last. I'm sure that there are women across the world that become widows every single day. And unfortunately, life goes on, but it goes on differently. It's certainly not the same way that it was, but we have the, the opportunity to make wherever you're at the best life now. So in the upcoming few minutes, that's what I wanna be able to share with you as some tools 
that you can use and some of the things that I've done that I've had to use to empower myself and positive self-talk that I, I've been able to, to make things or to remember things um, and just to create the best life that I've ever had, even though it's not necessarily the life that I envisioned for myself, but it doesn't mean that I can't still live the best life now. So I, this last weekend, I want to share with you. So, so hello gorgeous next month will be um, February of 2020 will actually be in existence for 14 years. And every year for the last 10 years, I take my team on a retreat and I lock them into a hotel room and, um, or not into a hotel room, but into a hotel. And we spend this weekend together just as a team bonding, laughing, making memories, but it's also work. We make goals for, I make them make personal goals for themselves. I make them make personal goals for, you know, the organization. How can they better themselves? How can they better use their talents to further the organization? And then goals for the organization. And how can we get those goals, make those goals, but then plan to bring them to fruition? It's not just about writing the goal on paper. It's just a dream without a plan behind it. And if you don't schedule it, it's never going to happen. So this last weekend was the weekend of our retreat. And I have to tell you, I have such an amazing group of individuals that surround me. My team is just absolutely incredible. And they're they're just wonderful, wonderful people. And they allow me to take them to a hotel for a whole weekend. They give up the time with their families and their personal lives. They all have other things going on, but they give up that time to spend this time with me. So I want to make sure that it's it's really a weekend that is enjoyable. And actually, I can say walking away, we again, we just left each other yesterday, that this was truly one of the best retreats, if not the best retreat we've ever had in the 10 years of doing this. There are 13 that are a part of my team. And as I said, we all come together. So we get to the hotel on Friday night um, after they they do their work wrap up their family life for the week. And then they meet us at the hotel and we take everybody for dinner. So I think it's very important to pray together and to share a meal together. So we sit down and we have dinner and we start off with a lot of laughs. And then we go into our um, our room at the hotel and we, we just start in. So I create these business breakouts so that I can keep us focused. So there are five areas that maybe we want to focus on. And not only is it growing the business, but it's also growing them personally, because I feel like if you, if you don't grow these people personally, um, you're kind of just being selfish that you're only about the organization, but also selfishly, I understand that if I grow them personally, they become better for the organization. So Friday night, we go to dinner, we get back in the room and we start right in. One of the first thing we talk about is we celebrate our successes. So that's one of the first things I want you to do is to celebrate your success. I think so many times that we get so focused on what's happening in the future that we forget to look back and to see exactly how far we've come. So for me, it would be very easy to just focus on the negative stuff. You know, in last decade, we lost one of our mobile day spas, a $250,000 vehicle that caught on fire. I lost my husband. But all of the things that we've done, you know, we've, we last year we had the best um, events that we've ever had. They, they, they brought in more money than they have in any of the prior events. We've expanded the affiliate program. We now have free resources for women. We've, we've expanded the website. We've got a blog. This podcast, a year ago, this podcast didn't even exist. But these were some of the goals that we set down. But if you don't take the time to see how far you've come and celebrate where you've been, you really lose sight of that. By celebrating where you've been, it gives you momentum to move forward. You know, it's not about it's not about how much money you make. It's about the lives that you change. It's about the experience that you've had. I've always said that, you know, when my life comes to an end, you know, I, I look now at the headstone that I have for Michael, which my name is on that headstone as well, which can be very humbling when you see your name on a headstone. But I also understand, I look at that and I ask myself, what's really important to me? I can't take the big house. I can't take the nice car. I, I, I There's so much, I can't take my jewelry with me. I guess I, they could send my jewelry with me, but it's not gonna do me any good. But what I do get to take when I leave this earth is the experiences. It's all of the memories that I've made while it's here. And what stays behind after I leave this earth is the legacy, the life that I live, the well-lived life, the example that I've set. 
you know, one of the six months, I think, after Mike passed away, I remember this mom, she, her son and my son played tennis together in high school. And this mom came up to me at a, at a holiday event that the, the kids were having at school. And we got into a conversation and I'd said to her, you know, I, something about losing my husband six months ago. And she looked at me and she goes, I'm so sorry. She said, I, I didn't know that you had lost your husband. And I said, my first response to her was good. I'm glad. I'm glad that you didn't know by my actions that I was a widow because that's not what I want. That's not the legacy that I leave. You know, I want to find this internal joy that's inside of me that no matter what, I can be happy and that I can move on. And so finding all of those successes, that makes me happy. It makes me realize that all of the hard work that we've done as an organization and as a group and as an executive team pays off. So that's the first thing that we do at the retreat is we accelerate, we celebrate our successes. We want to know how far we've come. So before we can see exactly where we're going, the next thing we do is we talk about the events because fundraising, fundraising is a huge part of what we do, right? We, I can't reach into somebody's pockets and actually make them give me money, but I can create an event that they would want to come to that they want to spend money at. So again, looking back at the events that we've got, we always ask two questions whenever we're reviewing something like this, especially the event. It's what did we do really well and what can be improved? So even when you're looking at something for your own life, right, you can look at what did you do well and what are things that you can be improved? And maybe there's nothing that you can be improved. Actually, I walked away from the retreat asking that same question. What went really well and what can be improved? And when I was asking that, I there wasn't anything that I thought needed to be improved. Everything went so well there, I wouldn't change a thing for next year. So I want you to look back at that at your life too. That would be number two. Number one is celebrate your successes. But number two, what went really well? And what could you improve this next year? And I'm not talking about setting huge goals. I'm talking about if you want to lose weight, if you're one pound lighter this year than you were last year, then you've succeeded. You know, you're a little healthier this year. You're, you're a little more fit this year. You're a little bit more successful. Whatever that looks like for you, just ask yourself what went well and what needs to be improved. So after we talked about the events and, and what needed to, to go well, then we, we worked on them. I want them to be able to um, set goals for themselves, not only for, as I said, not only professionally, but personally. So we write down some crazy cool goals. So what is it that, that you ever, you know, what do you want to accomplish? Do you want to go on vacation? Do you want to uh, buy a new car? Do you want a new house? Do you want to pay for your child's education? Whatever that is. But if you don't have them down on paper, you lose sight of them. Rachel Hollis has this really great idea, and I've actually done it. I think it was from Girl, Wash Your Face. And that is that every day, one of the first things that she does is she makes her goals at the beginning of the year, and then every day she rewrites those goals. That's one of the first things she does. Can you imagine I when I was doing that, and I still do that every day, it helps me start out my day focusing on exactly what's important to me, which are my goals. That's what I want to be able to do. Those goals that are set out for me personally and me professionally, I want to make sure that that's my focus. I don't want to get to the end of the year and say, you know, boy, I, I wasted so much time on social media or I got stuck in a distraction, you know, whether it's Twitter or LinkedIn or Instagram, that I wasn't able to achieve my goals, which that's a rabbit hole, a black hole that once you get on that, you, it, you can spend hours on that and waste time. But man, if you've got your goals in front of you and you know every day you sit down and you start out by writing your goals, that sets you up for success so that that's what you're focusing on. So the first thing I do is ask them to write down their crazy cool goals. But then after they write down their crazy cool goals, then they have to write down why, right? That's really important. Why is it that you want to set this goal? And if you achieve this goal, what will it mean? You can't just set the goal without actually having a why with it. The why gives you purpose. So one of my team members, I was kind of giving him a hard time about it, but it was really ingenious. And that was that his 2019 so so then they they make a vision board but he took all of his goals from 2019 and he put names with those goals so it was a reason his why was you know he it, it was a jeep that he wanted to buy for his wife but it was her name on the jeep 
That's why he wanted to work hard. That's what was motivating him. That was, was pressing him. That was his why. It wasn't about him. It's that his wife deserved this new Jeep. And so because it was for her and that was his why, he'll work harder at striving that that new for that new goal. So after they write their crazy cool goals and they put the why next to it, then they do a vision board. Then they actually have to go through and I make them find pictures. This year, in years past, we've spent hours cutting out pictures and printing off pictures. This year, I asked them to either send them to me so that I could print them off or they printed them off and brought them themselves. But they make a vision board because a picture speaks louder than words. So it's not just a list of words. Then they have all of these pictures that are there that represent the dreams and the goals that they want to bring to fruition for the end of the year, before the end of the year comes. So this particular team member of mine that I accused, which again, he was brilliant, but he actually took the vision board and repurposed it. There weren't any new goals that he wanted to set. He just really wanted to achieve the goals that he set last year. So on the board that he had, he wrote the names of the people that that he were he would be impacting by achieving those goals. And then he made a new 2020 so that it would represent this year's goals. But he put the why behind it. So when you're creating your crazy cool goals, it's not just about writing the goals. You have to put the why right next to it. And then you really need to create the vision board. So many of my team members, what they do is they take that vision board and they put it on a closet that they see every day. They will you know, sit, put it on the kitchen refrigerator because that's where you're going to be. Many of them will take a picture of that vision board and use it as their screensaver. So every time their phone locks and they go to open the phone, that vision board comes up. So they're constantly reminded about where you want to go and the direction that you want to be. And then every step that you take can be towards those goals. I just think that so, so many times we come on so strong in the beginning of the year that we really want to make these goals reality that that we we do that for long, but we're not consistent with it right? You do it in the beginning because it's all new and it's fresh and your vision board looks fresh. And then all of a sudden you just kind of look past it. So one of my team members actually created a vision board, but it was on a smaller piece of paper. It might've been on maybe a 10 by 10 piece of paper instead of the big, you know, 16 by 24s that I have them do it on. And when I questioned it, I said, I'm just curious to know why you decided to do it a little smaller. And her, her response was, again, really incredible. And it was because I want to move it because when it's on my bedroom door after a month or two, I look past it. I don't see it anymore. So not only did she refresh her goals for this year, but she's going to every month refresh the location. So it'll be someplace different where she'll see it and it'll bring new light in it. She can't look past it, that she really wants to be able to create those goals that she can bring to fruition this year, that she wants to be successful with them. So Number one, celebrate your successes from your previous year. Number two, ask yourself what really went well and what needs to be improved. Number three, your crazy cool goals. Write them, attach a why to it, and then I do a vision board. Bring out those pictures. Take some time for yourself to be able to put your vision board up where you can see it. My vision board happens to be a staple years ago. Our we've our home life has never been traditional because for so many years we actually ran our office out of our dining room. So I don't I, architectural digest will never come and do a story on my home. I can tell you that because there's there's no way my home is not your typical home. And so when we were creating the dining room um, as an office, my husband, late husband, screwed cork board to my dining room walls. And I remember looking at that going, oh my gosh. How, how am I ever going to, how, how are we ever going to resell this house? How are we ever going to, we're going to have to take that down and there's going to be holes in the wall. But I will tell you having corkboard on my dining room, my, so a whole wall in my dining room is nothing but our vision board. It's my vision board now, but it's all of those visions. And you know what? I have to walk from the living room through the dining room to get into the kitchen. I walk past it every single day. And because of the size of it, there's no way that I can avoid it. So I stand there and I'm grateful and I'm thankful and I take in exactly what those pictures represent, the better life that I want to be able to give to my son, the better life, the bigger impact that I want to be able to make in this world. So I really encourage you, write your crazy cool goals, write the why, and then make sure that you do a vision board that goes right along with it. The next thing that I have my team do is they have to choose a word of the year. So every year there's like a theme that we have 
um, through the word that you choose and everything that you do then coincides with what that word is for the year. So last year, my word was, um, what was my word last year? Intentional. That was my word. I have an op- I, I'm horrible about getting on social media. I'm horrible about wasting my time. I'm horrible about not sticking to my goals necessarily and, and letting other things that, that aren't necessarily important, but they're urgent. So they seep into the things that I've got to do that are, that are important. And so I in, encourage my team, they have to choose a word. And then we make something that represents that word that they keep in front of them all year long. So we had some amazing words this year, adventure, enjoy, level up, focus. Somebody had faith. Somebody else had consistent. So this was really interesting. My team member last year, her word was also intentional. And she found out that she was really good about being intentional. But what happened was she wasn't consistent with being intentional. And so because she wasn't consistent by being intentional, she didn't actually have any the success that she wanted to be able to have. She didn't have because of the fact that she would do it for a little while and then it would drop off. She wasn't being consistent. And so I want to encourage you to come up with whatever your word is for the year. What resonates with you? This year, my word of the year is to pray because I find that that's something that I don't do consistently. I, this, the Hello Gorgeous is a calling for me. It's really something that God placed on my heart and he said, would you do this? And because we have free will, I said, sure, I'll do it. So I did it and I took it on. But I find that there are so many times that even though it's a calling and and God's the one that gave it to me, I very rarely, rarely sit down and say to God, hey, what do you want me to do next? Or what's the next step that I, I should be able to do? Or spend time in prayer with him or just be quiet. For a long time, it was really hard for me to be quiet because there were so many different bad No, not bad memories, memories that made me sad because Michael wasn't here anymore. So I really had a hard time being quiet. Now this year is I really want to spend time to reflect and pray. And so that's my word this year. That's my focus. My focus is to really, and it's hard because it may, I can't necessarily quantify prayer, but what I can do is set a goal. Part of my goals, my crazy cool goals would be able to spend 30 minutes a day in prayer, which maybe I didn't do last year. Find something that would encourage me or spend 15 minutes in silence every day just so that I can hear what God is trying to say to me. So picking a word of the year is it's incredible. Find something then that you can do, whether it's we've done so many things that we have used to represent the word. Um, one year we did stained glass where they we did these glass things and they wrote their word on it and decorated them. Um, we've done rocks, actually, just a big rock that they wrote their word on and kept it someplace where they saw it every day. We did little stars with magnets on the back of them that would be on their refrigerator that had the word on them. The last few years, I've just stuck with the same thing because they love it. So we, I have somebody take a color sheet and they, you know, the adult coloring pages now with all the little things and there's a space in the middle and it says my 2020 word of the year and they write their word of the year on it and then they go through and they color it. They put it in a frame and stick it up someplace where they can see it all the time. And so everything that we do in our lives should be intentional to make this year a little bit better than what last year was. So when you're listening to this, I want you to take some time to do some of this. Celebrate your successes from 2019. Ask yourself what went really well and what would you like to improve? Set some crazy cool goals. Set some goals that are achievable and pick one goal out as you're setting your crazy cool goals. Pick one goal out that if you achieve that one goal, that everything else would fall into place. Shalene Johnson calls that a push goal. Pick that one goal out. Start, draw a circle around it, put a, bit, a red asterisk by it and focus on that one goal so that when you focus on that goal, that everything else will fall into place. And after you've picked your crazy cool goals, do a vision board and then choose your word of the year. If you want to share your word of the year with me, I would love, love, love to have it. So email me your word of the year at kbecker at hellogorgeous.org. Thank you so much for joining me today. I want 2020 to be your best year yet. If you want to learn more about Hello Gorgeous, feel free to visit our website at www.hellogorgeous.org. 
Thank you so much for joining me today on Hello Gorgeous, everything beauty, cancer, and inspiration. I'm your host, Kim Becker. And until next time, stay gorgeous. Another beautiful day Walking in the sunshine Spending the time with you Last night we had a good time Dancing in the moonlight And loving the night away I can't imagine what it'd be like I can't imagine what it'd be like I can't imagine what it'd be like without you I can't imagine that